Hey, this is Ronnie with Do As I'm Doing, and today we'll be going over how to install Windows or many other operating systems on your Synology NAS. Not to be confused with running Synology DSM from a virtual machine on Windows. So the first thing we need to do is make sure we get a virtual machine installed on our Synology NAS. In order to do that, we're going to go to this link right up here. Don't worry if you miss that, it'll be in the description. Make sure you go down to uh, the version of VirtualBox that you need by clicking on that little link. It'll open it up. You can see I'm running 5.2, so I'm going to download the top version. That may change by the time you watch this video. Go ahead and click through the links. Google's warning you here, but don't be afraid. Nothing to fear. Once that's done downloading, we're going to close those links and go to Package Center inside DSM. Do a manual install, browse to where we just downloaded that package. Virtual box you can see there, open it up. Click Next. And we'll wait for it to process. This will be faster or slower depending on the power of your particular NAS. Go ahead and accept the terms of agreement. Next. If you'd like to set up a password to log into your virtual box, do it now. You can also disable that authentication. I'm also going to enable advanced configuration and enable startups of VMs. You can search the web for more information on those. English, of course, I do not speak German. Leave that the same if you don't know what you're doing. Go ahead and run after installation and apply all those settings. And there you see it, VirtualBox is now installed on our NAS. Go ahead and open it up. In order to access it, click on the URL right there. And now we're inside VirtualBox. It's actually running on our NAS. We can create a new operating system or a new virtual machine by clicking on New. I'm going to go ahead and name this one WP7 for Windows 7 Pro. I'm going to select the type. You can see we have many different options, Linux, Mac OS, Windows, and more. Scroll down, you've got lots of choices here. Windows 7 64-bit for me. I'm going to set my RAM up to around 3, three gigs. Um, it gives it a little bit of horsepower when you're trying to do the install. You can bump that down later. Go ahead and create a virtual hard drive. Leave this the same, again, if you don't know what you're doing. Leave it dynamically allocated. That's going to allow the disk to expand if it needs to later on down the road. 25 gigs is fine. I'm going to bump mine up to about 35 gigs or so. Make sure you change where you're going to install it. It wants to install in the root folder right there. You see how it creates that VirtualBox VMs. Do not put your virtual disk there. It will fill up and uh, render your NAS pretty much useless as far as installing anything further. So go ahead and make a folder in your volume. Mine's uh, called virtual. I just created it there. Create that, and we're going to essentially create the shell for where we're going to install Windows 7. Now you can see I've got a uh, shell of Windows 7 Pro there. Got a lot of different system settings there. When you click Start for the first time, this is when you're actually going to select your uh, Windows or other operating system image. I already have mine saved on the NAS. You don't want it on the network, but actually have it on the physical NAS. Go ahead and select it. And if you've ever installed Windows or another operating system, this is the probably most time consuming part. You can see here we have a preview window. If you open it, you can see an expanded view of what's going on. It's actually installing right now, but we can't control it from there. So you can open this little console here and connect to your virtual box. I haven't had success using it this way before the operating system is actually finished being installed, only after the fact. So in order to get this to work, be able to control your install, you need to download Windows Remote Desktop Client. You can just Google for that and then click on this little link and it'll download a nice little file that when you click and open it, it will open directly to that Windows Remote Desktop. Now this is kind of a wonky little program, the mouse never seems to sync up for me, but with a little bit of uh, tinkering you can make sure well, you can get you can get what you need done here. We're gonna go ahead and fast forward through most of this um, after a few little clicks here. Pretty neat. You can see that Windows is actually 
running on the virtual box on our Synology NAS, select my version of Windows that I'd like to install, go through all these agreements. I'm going to do a custom, not an upgrade, because I'm starting fresh. Go ahead and click Next. If you can get your mouse to cooperate. And here comes the fast forward magic of video editing. I do like to mention that in order for this to work, you actually need an Intel based NAS. I'm not positive that all Intel based uh, Synology NASs will actually accept a VirtualBox install but there is a good chance of it. Uh, as far as I know, ARM processors will not uh, accept VirtualBox. Here you can see we are actually inside Windows. All seems to be well. You can go ahead and tinker uh, after the fact inside Windows and set it up however you'd like. Uh, but it seems like we have a successful install of Windows. It is now running inside of our Synology NAS, which is very helpful uh, for running little programs or applications that you want to have running 24-7 but don't want to have an entire Windows PC running in the background. You can click on your Windows 7 installation now and you can adjust the different settings. Some of them you have to actually stop the uh, the installation or the uh, you have to stop Windows from running before you can change them. One setting that I'm going to change is I'm going to go from NAT to a bridged adapter that makes it to where my installation is actually seen as a separate uh, IP on the network so that all uh, computers on my network can actually access it as opposed to NAT where it would be essentially hiding behind the IP of my Synology NAS. I'm going to go back to my system here. I'm going to bump up my CPU uh, to two cores just for the purposes of installing software that I need. It just makes it a lot easier. It doesn't bog down. I will be bumping that back later um, so that it will run with less resources, but for now, I'm not. Go ahead and make sure you select your Ethernet adapter. I forgot to mention that when I selected bridged adapter. Otherwise it will not find an IP, it will not work at all. And then you can start your Windows 7 machine again. See the little preview box? You can see that it's booting up. and it wants me to click on start normally. I'm gonna download the little file again even though it's on my system somewhere and it will open Windows Remote Desktop Client and select my network settings because I changed the bridged adapter and that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, this is a really neat way to be able to run small little applications that only run on Windows, uh, but you do not want to ins have a Windows machine running 24-7. Just install a lightweight version of Windows or some other operating system on your Synology NAS if it's compatible, and you can run those applications right from your Synology NAS, have them running 24-7. Thank you for watching, and for more helpful tips and videos, subscribe to Do As I'm Doing, and continue doing just that.